Hey everyone, Mechadusto here. Let me tell ya, every good journey has to start somewhere. And for Banjo-Kazooie, that start is right here in Mumbo's Mountain. Now, you might be thinking the tutorial of this game was Spiral Mountain, since that's where you learned all the basic controls before coming here, but no sir, this is where the real tutorial begins. As quick as it is iconic, Mumbo's Mountain had quite a lot going on for it, and today we're gonna be taking an in-depth look. Starting out, you're immediately facing a pretty sizable looking open world. Don't let this fool you though, as the level is actually quite linear. Sure, Bottles the Mole isn't teaching you basic movement, like in Spiral Mountain, but this is still very much a training session. To beat it, you'll have to make a clockwise loop due to a slippery slope the one way, and your path through the level is carefully planned out so that you get a little taste of every exploration mechanic you'll encounter later on in the game. While it's a bit itty bitty, this level got a huge amount of development time dedicated to it. Some of the assets for this level existed since the earliest betas of Banjo-Kazooie. They couldn't quite figure out how to get the open world style of gameplay working right. Initially, an almost Crash Bandicoot style of structured level traversal was used, with a fairly strict camera. This would eventually get tossed out the window for the current style of gameplay, which is more in line with the free roaming you see in Super Mario 64. And roam you shall, as this world is very careful with its placement of items and challenges. Right out of the gate, you're introduced to Notes, Swimming, and Jinjos. A nifty trick this game does that you never see elsewhere is items will tell you what they do when you pick them up. And you'll be using every item fairly often, so forgetting isn't extremely likely. Though I will say the game doesn't put quite enough emphasis on the importance of Notes early on. To actually beat the game, you're gonna need 810 out of 900 notes. This means a perfect score on almost every level. And if you don't hit that count in a single run, you're gonna have to come back later and do it again. Though, thankfully it's easy to do in Mumbo's Mountain since it's so small. The map is really just a big square, so being thorough is very easy here, and, and getting lost is basically impossible. Later levels will be getting increasingly complex layouts, however, but, but for now each corner of this world has its own little distinct section to help you navigate. For some somewhat bizarre reason, you're actually introduced to one of the few completely immortal enemies in the game, like immediately. These bull things are called <laughs> big butts for some reason. What's strange about them is they're one of the strongest enemies in the game, yet appear in the final level and the first level. While you might waste some time smacking him for a while, he's pretty easy to avoid, however. Just overall, kind of a strange design choice for the first level. If anything, I guess the lesson learned here is that the enemies might not necessarily be killable throughout the game, but that doesn't really happen all too often. Also, in the far corner, you have Konga the Ape. He's this level's mini-boss. Yeah, that's pretty much how bosses are gonna be like in this game. Mumbo's Mountain is good at tempering your expectations, if nothing else. He sort of acts as an intro to the sort of logic puzzles you'll be expecting to figure out. Taking an item from his tree, pelting him with eggs, and making him hit a switch with his own projectiles. This is pretty much as complex as it's gonna get in this game, uh, though it does get more difficult down the road. It also introduces you to the concept of friendly NPCs like this little monkey guy. Pretty much every level has a friendly NPC, and they're usually pretty good mascots for the areas they inhabit. Though we're pretty much done in this corner, so let's, let's start wrapping things up here and stroll up the hill. Uh, here you'll be requiring the most used ability in the entire game. The Talon Trot makes you marginally faster and lets you climb up steep slopes. And if you're an extremely impatient person, such as myself, you're going to be using it 100% of the time. It feels good to use too, having just the right amount of feedback. The movement is clean, though you do have to sacrifice the ability to attack and hover jump as per usual, and I honestly believe that it's a fair trade-off. On the topic of hover jumping, or I guess in this case it's technically flutter jumping, I feel like this actually drags the game down a bit. By giving you a little extra boost with your jumps, you never really have to commit to your leaps. 
Here the effect is fairly minor, but if you look at a situation like how hovering was in Super Mario Sunshine, it almost completely sucks all the challenge out of platforming. Another visual thing you probably noticed uh, by now about Mumbo's Mountain is just how distinct the way it's laid out. The level is broken into several tiny subsections, each with their own different graphical tweaks and landmarks. This is how every level in Banjo-Kazooie is designed, and it's extremely effective at keeping things visually interesting and making it easy to navigate. Rather than having just one big area with the same textures and props, like a level in, say, Super Mario 64, here it's a, a, like a bunch of tiny levels snapped together. A lot of early platformers at the time struggled with in-level variety, but this was one of the things Banjo-Kazooie really excelled at. The visual design of Mumbo's Mountain actually changed quite a bit throughout development too. Rare was very keen on nailing down that perfect aesthetic, and we can see it in these beta photos. Uh, some of the biggest changes were the level boundaries getting replaced with some rocky looking geometry instead of flat textures. Also Mumbo's skull looked completely different back in the day. There's also uh, actually a cool little conspiracy regarding Mumbo and the mountain. These little goblin boys running around had a pretty big design tweak, as they actually used to look exactly like Mumbo. Uh, this led to a popular fan theory that Mumbo was actually one of these goblins, up until his head got zapped into a spooky skull by Gruntilda the Witch, that is. Despite the level being named after him, Mumbo's actually a pretty passive guy here, serving soy to zap you into a termite if you fork over enough Mumbo tokens. Personally, I've never been much a fan of these tokens. They slow you down a lot in the early levels, but you get so many extras, you'll, you'll never have to worry about getting more by mid-game. These are actually required for progression, as certain Mumbo transformations are needed to make it through Gruntilda's lair. Of course, the game doesn't actually tell you that bit, funny enough. The termite transformation itself is uh, kinda lame. Not the lamest or, or the most useless transformation, but you won't be using it all that much. All it does is give you high hops and good traction, at the cost of being completely helpless. The design is clever though, with you donning a cute little backpack. The other termite enemies will actually comment on it before attempting to mug you. It's the little moments like this that really make this game special in my opinion. The termite is really just used for two things. Getting the Jiggy on top of the Termite Mound, and getting the secret, quote unquote secret, Layer Jiggy on top of the level entrance. Personally, I think the Layer Jiggy is probably the best puzzle level 1 has to offer. Hitting a grunty switch will cause a small cutscene to play, showing a Jiggy appearing on top of the level entrance. Now, to actually get said Jiggy, you're expected to use the Termite Transformation to get up there. It's kind of clever because the game never directly suggests you can leave the level with uh, your transformation, forcing you to get a bit creative. Also, uh, in case you haven't caught on by now, this level is extremely short, the shortest in the game. Once you get the Talon Trot, you can complete the level loop, meaning you can now travel as you please. Oh, also there's a Beak Slam ability thing that you can use to smash up some native housing. You actually use this thing a lot, but a ground pound in itself is pretty self-explanatory with these types of games. I'm honestly surprised it wasn't just made a default move. As far as aesthetics are concerned here, the, you know, the level looks pretty good. One of the advantages of being pitifully short is that the developers can really condense the art assets, packing a lot of variety into a relatively small area. Some of the game's larger levels can struggle with this a bit with levels like Clanker's Cavern ending up with a lot of empty space. Musically, the level's theme is pretty rock solid. This will actually be one of the songs you hear the most, as it generally plays on the title screen before you start up a game. The upbeat, happy tune is fitting for the cheery visuals, and changes instrumentation to match which region you're in. Conga the monkey adds a jungle beat, and the termites add a cute little marching tune. There was actually a beta level theme that sounds pretty cool, it would get repurposed as the Termite Mount Interior theme. Here's a quick sample. Uh, in case it sounds familiar, that's because this is a, a, a ripoff of the Elephant Walk song. But anyways, so how is Mumbo's Mountain overall? I think it's a good taste of Banjo-Kazooie. It's really more of a glorified tutorial level though. 
Uh, it sets up in such a way that you get familiar with all the skills you need to traverse every other world in the game. As a result, it's very easy and pretty short, but in this case I consider it a strength as you really just kind of want to get on with the adventure at this point in the game. That being said, the actual lay of the land is a bit bland. The whole level is just a big square, and it's kind of a shame considering how much terrain variety you'd see in Spiral Mountain previously. Also, while the linearity does make it a very effective teacher of basic mechanics, it does also kind of take away from exploration, which is a pretty huge part of this game. So overall, I'd say a great tutorial, okay level overall. Also, as a bit of a fun fact, Mumbo's Mountain was initially planned to be added to Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts as a level. In fact, they actually used a beta version of this level to test out the game early on. Unfortunately, it ultimately got dropped. Anyways, that's all for this time. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you liked what you saw, go do something about it. Until next time, see ya!